Hello and welcome to the first edition of MC in Focus, a show produced by the students in the 2008 Advanced Broadcast Journalism course here at Montgomery College. I'm James McLean. And I'm Roxana Solano. Thanks for joining us. Are you putting yourself at risk by drinking water in your own home? D.C. Water and Sewer Agency plan to replace the 35,000 lead pipes servicing D.C. to reduce lead levels in the district's water supply. Test results released this week show an increase in lead levels since the project's launch in 2004. The spike is due to disrupted lead scales and shavings left behind when a service pipe is cut in half. Test results suggest around 9,000 households in D.C. could have been exposed to tap water with elevated levels of lead. Concerns have arisen as to why this $93 million effort has aggravated the very problem it was supposed to solve. Councilman Jim Graham has proposed that the district government conduct independent testing to determine whether drinking water is safe. The usual aroma of roasted chicken was re replaced by a burnt smell as El Pollo Rico and neighboring businesses caught fire in Wheaton. Officials ruled that the fire was accidental and that the possible cause of the blaze was grease in the vents. El Pollo Rico is a local favorite for Peruvian food, well known by the community for its delicious chicken. It was even better known for being the center of scandal this past summer when federal officials seized nine employees and arrest four members of the family that owns the chain. The damage from the fire may keep the restaurant and neighboring businesses closed for the next few months. The estimate cost for repairs is $1 million. Cab drivers in the metropolitan area have been assaulted several times in the last month. The seven incidents were reported between midnight and 4.30 in the morning. The suspect is described as a 30-year-old black male. In most of the cases, the suspect struck or damaged a cab with his own vehicle. All the incidents have occurred around the DuPont Circle area, and the targets were Maryland cab drivers. Police say that the suspect is probably armed and considered dangerous. He used a Ford Crown Victoria during his attacks. The vehicle has the numbers 2057 or 2042 in dark letters on the rear and possibly the name Roper on the side. If you or anyone you know has any information on this case, call 202-727-9009. Ride-on passengers have a new concern after a rider is attacked. Ride-on is supposed to be a reliable, safe, and convenient form of transportation. But a recent series of events have changed riders' opinion. A student from MC was waiting for a ride on bus 49 at the Rockville Metro Station when he was approached by the stranger asking for a dollar when the student didn't have the dollar, the stranger got angry and struck him. The student was denied assistance from the bus driver and other passengers. He called 911 on his own and was taken to the hospital. He needed stitches to control the bleeding and x-rays showed a badly broken nose. Hundreds of Montgomery College students and other passengers ride the metro and ride on systems every day. It makes them wonder about added security measures to make the station safer, but so far, ride on bus officials have no comment. Now, if you're looking for apartments at King Farm Villages, your dream may be near. The Rockville City Council has approved an agreement with Montgomery County to bring first workforce housing units to King Farm. The agreement will provide an affordable housing for teachers and first responders. If the county meets several conditions, at least 40 rental apartments might be converted to workforce housing. The city council has no scheduled date for this housing. Spring transfer day is over. What did the students at Germantown, Rockville, and Tacoma Park campuses learn during this week? Over 30 schools and programs and over 50 professionals came to explain and offer educational deals. University of Baltimore offers guaranteed merit scholarships money to students with a 2.5 GPA. Morgan State's offer full tuition, board, books and fees for the 2008-2009 academic year. And U.S. citizenship is not required. Also, representative from local college and universities such as the University of Maryland and University of Maryland at Shady Grove are often at campuses waiting for you to ask them a question. You can access all transfer information at montgomerycollege.edu slash transfer. The next transfer day is September 24th during the next fall semester. Good luck. MC students might have to look for another way to get from one campus to another because campus connecting bus Route 127 will be discontinued on May 16th. 
The ride on transportation service is reacting to a budget cut of $400 million for the year 2009. Officials say Montgomery College can operate the service more cost effectively, only running it on school base. The college will receive extra funding for operating its own version of Bus 127. Earlier this week, world-renowned Tibetan monk Han Rin Po She visited Montgomery College to enlighten students and faculty on Buddhist perspectives of peace, awareness, and kindness. He spoke of his life experiences practicing Buddhism and how they helped him gain inner peace. He was honored by our social sciences department with a check of $250 to help fund the education of Tibetan children. For information on Garshan or our relationship with the country of Tibet, visit Montgomery College's study, study Abroad program on our website. The Udo Foundation is setting up a new program that will allow students to obtain scholarships. The foundation expects to award about 80 scholarships and 50 honorable mentions on the basis of merit to sophomore and junior level college students. Scholarships are valued at $5,000 each, and they are offered to students who have demonstrated commitment to careers related to the environment as well as Native American and Alaskan Native students. Udall Foundation seeks future leaders a wide spectrum of environmental, including engineers, science, urban planning, and renewable justice and economics. Why is fast food so popular? Our In Focus reporter looked into the appeal of fast food. America has a problem. We can't seem to control how we eat. Every day, people are faced with a choice to eat or not to eat fast food. This problem has resulted in an epidemic that has captured the public's attention. Obesity is among the leading causes of death in America, only second to smoking. According to the Center for Disease Control, an estimated 32% of adults are obese, with 5% extremely obese. Adolescents between the ages of 12 and 19 are an estimated 17%. The fast food industry has shouldered much of the blame, but lawsuits have become a trend as Americans search to blame someone other than themselves. Who needs to be held accountable? Fast food restaurants are searching for ways to improve their menus with healthier meals such as salads. But is that enough? We asked students their opinion on the fast food industry's attempt to give customers healthier choices on the menu. I think they're a good idea if people decide to eat them, but uh, if you're on the run, sometimes you don't even have time to eat something healthy like a salad. And McDonald's has uh, McDonald's have their dollar menu. Of course, it's cheaper, faster, and more convenient for everybody. And like in America right now, Everything's a go, 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 go. So, like, we try and grab everything on the way. Food choices seem to be limited, but healthier options do exist in the fast food industry. Combined with America's ever increasing lazy behavior, many people choose not to be healthy. We spoke with Karen Thomas, a professor from Montgomery College, about this issue. The reason that we're getting fatter is a combination of things. It, it's not something simple and easy. If it was simple and easy, we could have solved it. I think it's a combination of what we're eating now, we're eating much higher portion sizes than we used to. Fast food is cheaper than good food many times, so we pick those. And then the other is our activity levels. Is, is that just in day-to-day -day living, we now move less than we used to. There are ways of keeping healthy eating habits. With effort and making the right choices, obesity can become a problem of the past. For MC in Focus, I'm Jessica Bully. We'll be right back after these student-produced messages. <laughs> 